Hey guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome to this complete guide to Astalarn. Astalarn is the first boss in the second Elite Dungeon the Dragonkin Laboratory. A table of contents can be found in the description down below. We're going to be going through how to get there, gear, invent setups, all of the mechanics, and then at the very end, we'll put the whole boss fight together. It's not a very complicated boss, so this should be a pretty quick one. We are going to start things off with some information about the boss. Astalarn has a combat level of 1200, has 250,000 life points, has a max hit of over 6,000, has an affinity or base hit chance of 55%, is poisonable and is not stunnable. Astalarn will attack with magic at a distance and will attack with a mix of magic and melee if you're in melee distance. Let's take a look at gear and invent setups. Any combat style can be used for the second elite dungeon, although in my opinion, range will be the easiest. This is for hit chance purposes. The majority of the dragons inside the dungeon will be very weak to range attacks, so you should have no problems landing hits. If you go in with magic and melee, there's a half decent chance that you'll splash, and it'll work out, but it might take a little bit longer. I will be using the ranged combat style for all three of my Elite Dungeon 2 guides. Blue Blubber Jellyfish allow you to eat without losing any adrenaline. Blue Blubber should be used over solid food whenever possible. Here's the gear I'll be using for this guide. I've got an Overload, a Super Prayer Renewal Flask, an Adrenaline Potion, a Weapon Poison, and a Super Anti-Fire. I've then got Mechanized Chinchampas and an offhand Armital Crossbow, a Black Dragonhide Shield, and a Bronze Dagger with an Excalibur for Bladed Dive. The remainder of my invent is full of Blue Blubber Jellyfish and Cerdoman Brews. I am also using a War Tortoise with an even split of the exact same foods. As for armor, I'm wearing a full set of Armital. You'll notice that I've got the Crackling 2 Dragon Slayer perk on my Armital Chain Skirt, as that will provide 7% bonus damage against all dragons, including the mobs and the bosses in the second Elite Dungeon. I'm not using Crackling 3 Dragon Slayer, as it can be more expensive, and I've left all expensive perks out of this video. On the weapon side of things, I'm using a Royal Crossbow, as well as Ruby Be Criminal Bolts. I've got a Scrim Shaft Cruelty, an Asylum Surgeon's Ring, an Amulet of Souls, and a Kiln Cape. I will not be using anything in my Sigil slot, and I will not be using any auras, although I would strongly recommend using either Sharpshooter or Reckless. Now, before we take on the boss, we need to actually get to the boss, and there are a couple sections of this dungeon that are a little difficult, largely because of the jellies. These jellies will multiply so long as they're in melee distance to you. If you keep them in melee distance, they're going to keep multiplying, and you'll end up in a very bad situation. The easiest way to deal with them, especially if you're using either ranged or magic, is to actually run around and kite them. This technique of kiting allows you to deal damage to them without letting them attack you. Because they can't attack you, they also will not multiply very often. You can also combine this with mechanized chinchampas as well as stuns to make this even easier. You'll see that I'm able to get through this section of jellies without going through any food or any supplies. Even though it's not the cleanest thing in the world, this is a very reliable and safe way to get through this section. If you let them stand all around you and hit you, they're going to keep multiplying and you'll have a very bad situation on your hands. The second jelly section is dealt with in a very similar way to the first. If the jellies cannot attack you in melee distance, they cannot multiply. What I'm doing here is I'm actually trapping the jellies behind the Celestial Dragon. I'm then going to sit there with my Magic Prey on, I'm going to tank the Celestial Dragon, and I'm going to use my Mechanized Chinchampas to take out everything attacking me except for that dragon. Once I've taken out all the jellies and everything else attacking me, I'm going to take out the dragon and the door's going to open. Okay, we've managed to make it to the entrance of the Astalarn boss fight. It's time to go over all of the mechanics one by one, and then we'll put them all together, and I'll show you guys the full boss fight. The first mechanic we're going to take a look at is the Pulsar Star. Pulsar Stars have 20,000 life points and will frequently deal mass typeless damage to the player. The Pulsar Stars attack very rapidly, and they should be priority number one to take out. I would strongly suggest using the Debilitate ability on the Pulsar Star to make the damage a lot more manageable. Take it out with a couple thresholds, and then get back on the boss. The Pulsar will normally deal between 700 and 1000 damage per attack, so using Debilitate to have that damage makes it a lot easier to deal with without having to spam eat. Maybe not a strategy for a speed kill, but for your first attempts, it's a really good way to preserve food. The second mechanic we're going to look at is the Neutron Star and Wormhole. This one's really simple. Astalarn is going to make you an anchor point for a wormhole. When the bar above your head empties completely, a black wormhole is going to end up on the ground underneath you. You'll take constant damage for standing in this area, so it's advised to get out. Shortly after this, a neutron star will spawn. It's going to follow you, and if it collides with you, you'll take upwards of 6,000 damage. You need to lure this neutron star into any area of the wormhole. As soon as you do this, the wormhole will turn white, and you'll be able to stand there and deal increased damage to the boss. This Neutron Star is extremely erratic. It can spawn literally anywhere, including very close to you, so it's very easy for it to catch you off guard. For this reason, I'd recommend standing exactly where I'm standing in this video. Once I've dropped the wormhole, I'm going to back up directly into the east wall. I should be safe from the wormhole's damage, and this should put me in a very high percentage area for not getting hit by the Neutron Star when it spawns. In this case, the Neutron Star spawns directly inside of the wormhole, and I'm good to go. As soon as the wormhole turns white, you can stand on that area, and you'll then be able to deal increased damage to the boss. We've saved the easiest mechanic for last. This is the Celestial Rain. 
If you take the boss room and split it right down the middle as I've done on screen, there are two sections. When summoned, the Celestial Rain will be present in either section 1 or section 2, but never both at the same time. Because of this, if we're standing in our current location and staying there for the majority of the boss fight, we're always going to be safe from the rain. It starts by hitting you 50 damage at a time, and it gradually stacks up until it's hitting you close to 800 damage every single game tick. You don't want to spend too much time in this rain, and if you're stuck in this rain for an extended period of time, I would recommend either using Reflect or using Barricade. If you're standing in the correct location, no defensives should be necessary, and you shouldn't even notice the rain. Anytime you see yourself getting small hits, simply switch from section 1 to section 2 or vice versa just by walking a square or two, and you'll be completely safe. Now that we've been over all of the mechanics separately and individually, it's time to put everything together and go over one full kill. I'm going to activate my stat boosting prayers as well as deflect magic. Once I'm all potted up, I'm going to attack the boss. I'm going to start off this boss fight by using a lot of thresholds as I'm saving my death swiftness ultimate ability for a specific moment that I'll get to in a minute. After threshing for just a moment, the first pulsar star is going to spawn and I'm going to use debilitate on that star. After that, I've become a waypoint, so I'm going to drop the wormhole. Once the neutron star has been lured in, I'm going to stand on that area and then I'm going to death swiftness. Anytime you're standing in a white wormhole, you're going to deal increased damage to your enemy, and this stacks with any offensive boosting thresholds or ultimate abilities. Because of this, in a single Death Swiftness, Sunshine, or Berserk rotation, with max tier gear, you'll generally be able to clear the entire boss fight right then and there. Because I'm not in max tier gear, it's going to take me more than one set, and I'm just going to repeat the exact same process over and over again. I'm going to lure the second Neutron Star, I'm going to get rid of the Pulsar that spawns shortly after, I'm going to use Debilitate on it, and then quite simply, I'm going to finish off the boss fight. The main thing to look out for in this boss fight is the Neutron Star. Nothing else is really going to KO you, but be mindful of standing in the rain and tanking a Pulsar Star for an extended period of time. If you mess up and accidentally absorb a Neutron Star, I would recommend teleporting out and restarting the boss fight, as you'll have to wait for quite a long time, sometimes upwards of one minute for the next wormhole to spawn. The boss can't be damaged until you're standing in the white wormhole, so you're normally going to be better off restarting. Other than that, if you find yourself taking 4 or 5 or 6 cycles, it might be an issue with your DPS rotations, and improving in that regard even ever so slightly will make a very big difference. Okay, I think that's everything. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, anything at all, the comment section down below is the place for it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, and subscribe if you're interested in more videos like this one. I wish you the best of luck in the second Elite Dungeon, and hopefully you guys get more drops than me, as I've now done 153 complete solo runs without a single codex from any of the three bosses. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go live my life.